Hi all, this is Maro. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to my channel. So I finally broke down and decided to get Pomern. I had some calls sitting around and I used up my coupon, I think the 25% coupon that I got in June for maybe Marceau. And uh, I was I was planning to wait till December to get a new one and then just use the call I have and get Pomern. But as I played three versus three uh, spirit uh, rank sprint and, um, you know, just kind of reading about uh, the ship uh, from other reviewers and YouTubers, I gave in and decided to get Pomern without waiting for the coupon. So I paid the full call price for it. And I played it in the sprint ranked and, uh, you know, initially I started with Georgia and uh, that was fine because three versus three, you could really kind of, you know, get close and uh, do some damage. But uh, the fact that Pomeran had more guns, even if they're 15 inches and also torpedoes, plus the armor, plus solid secondaries that are better than Georgia's. You know, I decided, you know what, let me switch, let me get the ship and uh, let's play. And I did, and I won some, I lost some. You know, it didn't take too long to uh, rank out. Um, it was a fun experience, and uh, the ship did really well in that setting, I think. When you can get close to your opponents, and you can kind of um, use everything that this ship has, 12 guns, which not, are not so precise uh, at long distances, but once you get closer, you know, they're fine. Torps secondaries hydro it was uh it was a uh, it was a good experience then i took it to randoms and that was a little more of a mixed um, mixed bag for me and uh, the reason for that i think probably has to do less with the ship but just the meta of the random games and, and the way they play out you know you have a lot more ships on both sides so you depend a lot more on your teammates or what the enemy team is doing to make any progress. And sometimes Pomern struggles when it comes to that, right? It struggles because it can burn, right, easily. Um, it can get, um, you can get overexposed and focused, especially if you push too much. And, you know, I was tempted to do it a few times and I do see a lot of players that uh, do the same thing. They basically just go in with the ship. They want to engage those secondaries because they're really good secondaries. The German secondaries, they can penetrate, uh, you know, higher level armor. Um, they can start fires. They're really precise. It's, it's, a, it's a good experience. And in some ways, even a better experience for me than... Uh, using let's say Massachusetts secondaries because the pen value of the mass secondaries it's not the same as the one that uh, the Germans have especially the they get the quarter pen value on their secondaries and they have higher caliber guns so I think they can go through 38 millimeters I believe and that starts to make a difference it starts to make a difference in terms of the raw damage that you can do because sometimes with uh, with the Massachusetts it feels like Yes, I'm shooting my secondaries, but I'm doing no damage at all. Because I think even if you use IFHE, you can only get it up to, what, 20, maybe um, 6 millimeters. So that affects some of the cruisers, but, um, you know, not the battleships. And here, here, this was like a good salvo that Alsace landed on me. I mean, it was like, what, probably 20,000 plus. I shot at him all 12 guns and didn't really do as much damage and he, you know, waited and fired and really scored some solid, solid shots on me. So even if you're a German battleship, you do need to pay attention to what you're doing. I guess the upside here is uh, the fact that uh, most likely there were really no citadels, so you're still able to heal a lot of this damage. And it's not uh, it's not the end of your game here, but uh, in any case, something to be careful about and something to watch for. 
So here I tried to go around. My plan was, you know what? I'm just gonna go around C, try to see if I can squeeze it. If some of my teammates come along, we can do well. But then there is that DD here that is honestly preventing me from pushing. And most of my team is just kind of bottled in where they are. So I decide to, you know what? I've had enough, I'm leaving. I'm just going to go and uh, switch the sides where I am. Because sometimes if your teammates are not doing what you want them to do, the best thing to do is just leave them behind. And that's exactly what I decided to do here. But it seems that uh, some of the red team players are doing the same thing as well. And uh, I think they're also moving more to the west. So I'm looking for targets of opportunity. They're not really great here because between the rocks and the islands, you don't necessarily have a lot of open areas where you can shoot at. And, you know, this is one of those things also, I think maybe where the better players can take advantage of um, the terrain. I honestly prefer to play sometimes where there are not a lot of, uh, a lot of islands and a lot of uh, protection when I play a battleship like this. Uh, I'd rather like to see them exactly where they are so that I can engage them and uh, I don't necessarily take full advantage of uh, the islands that are around to protect myself. So on this map, this area of this particular map, not my favorite. And I guess in the past, while you have Hydro and you can detect the torps that come your way, you know, this is a big ship, so it's not really easy to turn or maneuver around it. So that's the reason I decided to just put some distance between me and uh, the destroyer in the sea cap while I guess my team is trying to deal with them uh, very slowly. So again, here, I think in the beginning, there was uh, an issue between some of my teammates. I think the Donskoy player and the FDG player, um, they exchanged fire for whatever reason. And I think Donskoy even going into the into the battle was like 15,000 uh, health points down. But, uh, you know, these things happen, can be helped sometimes. Uh, the best thing is just to ignore them and move on and, you know, hope that you can make enough of the difference uh, for your team to uh, to point the game, the outcome of the game in the right direction. Meaning, you know, you can do enough to win. Sometimes it happens. So this DD has been kind of really playing it carefully here, not moving from where it is. This is again another example of, uh, you know, a late uh, salvo. But uh, in this case, the DD is finally out. One of my battleships is really too close to that DD, so I'm not sure how that's going to end up for it. Oh, there are the torps, so I guess it's not going to end up so well. And um, if we could take this destroyer out, the team may have a chance to finally kind of push through here. So it's, sometimes it's amazing one DD what it can do. It basically, I think it held us to where we were this whole time because no one had uh, enough either teamwork awareness or gameplay to push him out of that position. Finally, he's out and now we're getting the C cap and uh, are able to slowly push. And so far the game looks like we're doing fine. It's four versus three, so we have slight advantage. I think that Alsace really aims really well. Uh, you know, another solid salvo. I don't think I really caused a lot of damage to that ship as much as I hoped. And with Pomern, one of the things is you do have 12, 15 inch guns, but your firing angles are really not that great. Uh, you really have to move your ship and expose a lot more of your broadside to be able to engage all 12. So a lot of the time I'll end up just using the front six and the secondaries because secondary angles are much better. So you're able to put a lot of them to work earlier and at a lesser angle but uh, getting all 12 uh, guns is not as easy of a task and you really need all 12 given the low sigma and you know they're really not that precise so getting the, the enemies uh, out is not an easy task but i think this alsace has come to his natural end and while he's done a great job 
punishing me, I do get the pleasure of finishing him off. So, well done me. <laughs> Alright, so we got the C cap here. And, uh, you know, I see the two cruisers, Neptune and Rune. And as a battleship, well, as a cruiser, I love when the battleships start pursuing me. Especially when I'm a Rune or another HE cruiser. That I can just rain fire on them. And yes, I will take some damage, but... That typically tends to work out for me so here I decide well I'm not going to do that I'm going to disengage from these cruisers and uh, let uh, the rest of my team deal with them I'm actually going to go south because I see this big grouping of ships that's coming from a and uh, right now I think we are at this advantage we have six ships to their seven so it's only, we're only one ship down, but um, somehow it just feels that, um, you know, we have been engaging the red team and we've cleared them from C. There's still some at B, but there is a big bunch of them coming. And uh, if we are not prepared, we may easily lose this. So here the destroyer, the new Legacy destroyer that World Warships is testing is uh, available and uh, visible so get the pleasure of using my secondaries here and uh, the main battery take them out as i try to transition towards south and um, face the oncoming barrage of ships now this may have not been may have not been the best idea well actually no let me let me take that back i think it's a good idea the way i executed it wasn't the best and uh, I think you will see in a couple minutes why. But, uh, you know, you can only ask for so much. You, you, you try to make more good decisions than bad decisions. And uh, in this case, I may have, you know, one good decision that was followed by one not so good decision. But uh, in any case, uh, I think it's going to provide a good opportunity for, uh, for this ship to do what it can. Um, Regretfully, could have maybe done some things better here as well, but uh, you know we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So of course, I'm on fire, and you know what? I just decided to take a chance here behind the islands and use my repair party because I also have the heal coming online, and uh, I felt you know what? That's enough. I should be okay and uh, use up some of that uh, health a little later. Uh, the rune is doing what the rune does best. You know, kite, use those two back turrets and spray HE. And typically it's not really easy for me as a battleship to do a lot of damage to the ship. Um, somehow, you know, I guess it's the German protection and it's not as easy to score high damage. Here I get really lucky, I get a sit on it. But, um, you know, that's more of a, an exception than the rule. And so here I come out and I come out in front of three ships with a fourth ship in the back. Iowa is there, Alaska is there, Riga is there, and Georgia is like almost dead in the back. So I decide to take advantage of this open broadside and um, do a pretty good job there. Three sits, five overpens, you know, that Riga is out. And now I have torps on both sides, and this is, I think, where I make a mistake. First, I cannot decide, I guess, which is always a problem, right? Uh, which way to go. So is it left, is it right? I'm afraid of uh, Alaska's improved pen angles. I get to fire my torps, but I really don't do a good job with my guns at all. And uh, this Iowa gets away from me and this has happened a few times to me that the turrets have been disabled the main gun turrets and I think the reason for that is I've used uh, I think um, in my equipment for the ship I wanted to boost my secondaries and not really protect the main battery maybe that's why I've experienced this and then here obviously I make even a bigger mistake, I am just uh, wide open to this uh, Alaska, I can't decide which ship to choose, my secondaries are firing, I try to do a little bit of you know last minute damage on the Alaska and uh, 
als uh, Alaska takes me out. So, as I said, it was a good decision to come here and engage these ships. I think what I should have done is, well, I could have done a lot of different things. I could have uh, kept my course straight against Iowa, perhaps, or even towards uh, Alaska. But uh, I think I just uh, wanted to take ships off the board, so I opened myself too much to, um, to Georgia. I wasn't able to fire any guns at Iowa to finish her off. And then I allowed uh, Alaska a, a, you know, a party as far as uh, she was concerned when it comes to me. Luckily enough, I think my team uh, did a good job finishing the Iowa, finishing the Alaska, and now it's three versus one. In terms of caps, the red team still has two versus one of ours. And uh, I was getting concerned that now we are going to not get the cap because we're chasing the kill and the points will tick. And uh, there are only like three minutes left or four minutes left and we'll lose the game. Luckily enough, Rune pops up and uh, my team is able to do a really good job of uh, putting her down. And that's how we won this game. Overall, it was a quite decent game, uh, just under 200,000 in damage. Mostly of, most of that came uh, at the closing stages. Nevertheless, uh, it was a pretty good game, even with all the mistakes that I, that I made there at the end. Which just highlights how good this ship is when it comes to brawling. Overall, good game. Second overall, just over 2,000 points. Solid finish. Here you can see the, the brawling results. Uh, over 100,000 damage basically came from Iowa and Riga. Uh, I guess if I was just a little luckier or uh, better, could have uh, bagged those two kills as well. But, you know, can't have it all. Lastly, a good point haul. Nothing great, but solid. So overall, good game, solid game. Hope you like the replay. Enjoy the high seas and hope to see you soon. Mara out.